the chapel, a small private chapel that was connected to a palace that was owned by the Scrivani family. And it was the Scrivani family who commissioned Giotto to decorate this chapel with frescoes. It's called the Arena Chapel because it's next to an ancient Roman arena. When you're inside it as we are now, I have to say that it's taller than I expected. And that feeling of being enclosed by images that happens when you're in a space entirely covered with fresco. There are lots of narrative scenes, but even in between those scenes are tromloy faux marble panels. And so we get the sense that there is inlaid stone, but in fact, this is all painting. And that extends even onto the ceiling where we have a star-studded blue sky with images of Christ and Mary and other saints and figures. The Arena Chapel is organized in a very strict way. Three registers begin at the top and move downward. I think of it as a kind of spiral. That is, it tells a continuous story. It begins with Christ's grandparents. It goes into the birth of Mary, her marriage, and then when we get down to the second register, we get to Christ's life or ministry. And then the bottom register is the passion. These are the events at the end of Christ's life and immediately after his death. Now, all of this is thanks to, strangely, it might seem to us today, a sin, the sin of usury that weighed heavily on the conscience of Enrico Scrovegni, whose palace was next door and who owned this land and built this chapel and hired Giotto. His father was a usurer. Enrico himself was a usurer. 